this matter. Now I'd like to hand over to Mamadou Goita. He's also very committed to farmers and farmers' associations in Africa. He's the uh, executive director of EARPAD, but he also works on a far larger scale. Um, far beyond his work at EARPAD. So now I'd like to hand over to Mamadou. And Mamadou, I will have to remind you to perhaps be a bit quicker. Thank you, Fatma. I'll try to be brief. And uh, the documents will be available to you afterwards. I will have to talk a bit about the territorial aspect and fa family farmers and their ability to uh, meet the needs of urban centers for food. One fundamental question is what exactly are we talking about when we talk about territorial markets? They have been the object of the Food Security Committee, and they have a rather interesting definition, and there's an interesting definition on page two, the local, national and regional markets, so very diverse markets and might be operating at the local or urban level, peri-urban, national level. So all these different levels, they're also directly linked to, um, um, to the farmers and the processing. So two points here, territorial markets are not just local markets. We often hear of local markets being very marginalized markets in a village, which can't really create wealth. What we need and the fact is that many of these markets go beyond just the village, so they're not really just local markets, territorial markets. People often say as well that they're territorial, uh, sorry, they're informal markets, but that's not true either. There is a tax system. The, there is in, an informal aspect to these markets, but there is also a formal side to these markets that go beyond just a community or a village. And they're often cross-border markets as well, covering a whole zone. There are also eight characteristics that have been defined of these markets. The marketing of these products are linked to the creation of wealth, and the wealth created is done in the territory. And very often people are surprised that the growth rate in Africa is high, but people are increasingly poor. But that's the way the economic system is in this country. The wealth is created inside the country, but the people benefiting from this are outside the country because their wealth is exported, despite the fact that it's created in the country. So there's a number of points that I want to emphasize in my presentation, in most countries, in particular West Africa, haven't defined the aim of the agricultural sector. We've got pastoralism, we've got um, livestock farming. What does this mean? Well, it means that these countries in general don't have an agricultural policy. So th the question is, what type of market are we talking about? What we didn't hear this morning, less than 20% of these products are on the formal markets. And on, on the global markets, but 80% of the produce is not on the global markets. 
And that has created the situation that we are finding ourselves in in many countries now. So it's about the circulation of food and food produce. So we need to first solve the problem and define the type of vision that we have for the agricultural sector in these countries before we can resolve the issues that the agricultural sectors are facing and the markets are facing. There's not a lot is known about these mar markets. They, need, they create wealth to feed the population, but this wealth also needs to be redistributed um, within the country at the regional level as well. So, here's an example. Uh, you can't read it very well, but it's about the structure of investments. These family farms can improve the quality of their produce. We had a food crisis in 28, and a lot of countries took measures to support family farms to help them produce better and more effectively. Rice, for example, we saw a rise of 11 percent before and after the crisis. Maize that rose by 10 percent in West Africa. So he can see West African countries, and we have 59 ton, million tons of cereal that were produced, so that's a substantial rise and has an impact on global production. And most of these countries did increase their production with support from the state, with infrastructure support, but also financial support. The question of financing, well, there's a number of points I wanted to emphasize here. Family farmers face a number of risks. Their ability to improve their, um, the way the markets are structured, but also to create wealth, is a very important thing. These farmers need to be able to reinvest in their farmers, and this is important at the local level. It's important for territorial communities, and it's also a question of national budgets as well. But three risks I want to emphasize economic risks linked to the perception that many investors have of family farmers. The economic risk linked to the fact that these farmers find it difficult to access loans. Um, 15 to 18 percent is um, the amount of loans that, of family farms that can access loans in these areas. And the loans simply aren't adapted to funding these types of farms. The interest rate is very high, and the loans are for too short a period to allow the farmers to develop over time. So these as risk, and then there are natural risks and technical risk, risk related to climate change, to the risks of the, that the crops themselves face, and also the animals that they might become sick, for example. There are a number of initiatives in the region that I won't insist on. Now, let's look at the needs. I don't know how many minutes I've got left, but I'll try to tell you about this. The first level of need is very important. It's about human capital and social capital. We talked about training and support and basic infrastructure. These are the best ways to ensure the distribution of this wealth and this food in the territory. And we don't have an ideal situation at the moment at all. We, there are structures to, to distribute um, 
to distribute the food in areas where it's not produced. And there are a number of countries that are doing well here, but not all. And access to education, access to water as well, the power on the market, negotiating power on the market, the capacity to influence policymakers as well. Now, three suggestions that I'd like to conclude with. The first aspect is the type of support. Funding these types of farms is an essential issue. The credit system, the lending system at the moment is not suitable to the, for these family farms. The second point, there are structural problems that need to be sorted out, and is, there's questions of road transport, storage problems. And then there's um, support for food security and food sovereignty. And this needs to be sorted out at the regional level and at the national level. And there could be various means of improving this. Now, improving production, territorial markets, these need to be adapted and made far more coherent. And then, of course, the regulating of these markets, that needs to be sorted as well. And, of course, the processing of these produce, agro-food business as well, so that the family farmers can access these processing systems. And, of course, and, of course, training for young farmers as well. So it's, all this information is available in the presentation. Thank you.